Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Recoup. I'm Cooper Daniels, and I'm a guy that knows a little about a lot. And today I am here for the second time with Mr. Anthony Scaramucci, the founder of Skybridge Capital, former White House communications director, et cetera, et cetera. How are you doing, Mr. Scaramucci? Well, you know, listen, I was 6'5 when I met Donald Trump. I was six foot one when I met Sam Bankman Freed. So yeah. I'm still here, but I'm getting shorter. You know what I mean? I got yeah. to adjust my now? license. You know, it's been tough. Been a tough couple of months, actually, but you know what are we gonna do? Yeah, they keep on chopping you off at the legs. It seems like Jesus. Yeah, this is really tough. I mean, this is a bad situation, you know. And yeah, as you man. know, I was supposed to uh, interview Sam at the Cipher. Of course, we couldn't do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I actually I saw you. We we bumped into each other at the LA Blockchain event a few weeks um, earlier in yes, November. Of actually, course. yeah. And um, you were supposed to come on the show that following, I guess, Tuesday, which was Election yes. Day, and that was literally the day that everything kind of fell apart um with uh, ftx i think that you actually flew over there to check in on him what was that like you have a really good memory yeah no i and i, and I think i saw you after the debacle happened right am i right in saying that or um, i think sure? i i think you saw me happening? like probably the next day it started to next go down day, yeah, cz yeah. cz may have uh tweeted the next day yeah, yeah. What a, what a situation. But anyway, to make, make a uh, long story short, um, when CZ put out that tweet, and, and, and this is interesting part of the story. If you have a moment, I'll tell it. I, yeah. I took Sam with me to the Middle East. We scheduled him at FII. We scheduled him in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. He had the opportunity to go to dinner with MBS. Um, I set up meetings for him in the UAE. Um, he met senior leadership there as well. Um, and so obviously I had no idea that he was perpetrating what he did. The concern for me was that Monday, I actually thought this was a rescue finance situation. I thought, okay, he's got a little bit of a row with CZ. He's got to buy back those tokens. Could be a rescue finance. Maybe there's an imbalance that can happen at a brokerage where there's an imbalance. The assets are there, but there's an imbalance between long-term assets and short-term assets and maybe you need a bridge to f facilitate that mm -hmm. so i thought this was a rescue finance situation and then the numbers kept growing and then i said to my wife wow um i sold a third of my business to sam i have to go down to the bahamas i'm gonna unilaterally fly down to the bahamas and i did that on november the 8th and when i got to the bahamas it became clear that you know, there was a very big issue. His compliance people more or less told me that he moved money from accounts in the FTX realm over to Alameda, yeah. which was a direct violation of the terms of service. So I'm not a prosecutor. And so I'm not going to start, you know, using fraud and all this stuff because it's prosecutorial terms. OK, I can yeah. only tell you that what he did was inappropriate. What he did was wrong. Yeah. And you know, I hope they find as much money as possible and they fix it. But here's the thing I would say to your listeners and viewers, you know, I'm 35 years in the business. I come with a suit and tie. Yeah. I have six compliance people in my office that are working to make sure that we are ethical of high integrity and that we're operating with the highest regulatory standards in the industry. To do what they did OK, is to run roughshod over multiple decades of reputation. So it's not just me. It's a guy like Kevin O'Leary. Yeah. It's Tom Brady. You know, it's, it's a multiple group of people that feel probably disabused and disenfranchised by what happened. And so I'll be fine. You know, I'm doing this 35 years. I'm a survivor. I'm well capitalized. Uh, we'll buy back our shares eventually once the bankruptcy people get around to get, get around to that. Yeah, I think this will be a lasting blow for the industry. I don't think the industry is going to just say, OK, that's no problem. OK, and I'll, I'll, I'll provide you with some perspective. When Lehman Brothers blew up and went bankrupt, that was September of 2008. The bottom, the market bottom didn't happen until March of the following year. So, yeah. 
you know, we're in for a more rough road ahead for the cryptocurrency markets and for uh, our favorite cryptocurrencies. The question, it will call people's judgment. It'll make people self-doubt. It'll make people rethink their investment thesis or what works or what doesn't work. Um, and that's a shame because there's a yeah. lot of great technology, a lot of great things happening in the industry, uh, more adoption, more capital scaling into the industry. And it's a shame that uh, this sort of stuff has happened in 2022. But we've got fraud. We've got leverage. We've got over leverage. We've got the debacles at Three Arrow and Celsius and BlockFi and uh, Voyager, yeah. FTX. You've got mm -hmm. an issue now. And I hope Barry's OK, because I genuinely like Barry. You have an issue at uh, the grayscale Genesis. situation with the Genesis thing. And I hope that gets resolved. Trust me, I'm rooting for those guys, but there's yeah. an opacity to our industry, you know? And so we have to provide more uh, openness, more transparency. Um, obviously we need more decentralization, less centralization. Mm -hmm. um, but listen, this is a rough time. Anybody that's telling you it's not a rough time, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, it's, it's, no, it's no, no. a rough time. And it's sad, it's sad to watch this happen to so many different people. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine with what's happened this last year, you have some friends being like, you know, Mooch, like, what's going on, man? Are you still are you still with this cryptocurrency stuff? Like, how about yeah. the pivot? Yeah. Are, are you getting yeah. that heat? I mean, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> and what's what's your what do you say to those guys? Yeah. People say, geez, I hope you don't leave the cryptocurrency industry, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I said, well, listen, you know, I made a five year play. I made a five year bet in 2020. I said, OK, I think that these use cases are going to explode. And I think this industry is reaching escape velocity, particularly Bitcoin, Ethereum. Mm -hmm. You know, I like Algorand a lot. Mm -hmm. I do own Solana. Mm -hmm. I think Solana has been wounded by uh, FTX, but I don't think Solana has been permanently wounded. I think Solana will come back. That's my honest opinion. OK. And I think I think there's an opportunity for Algorand. But I got to tell you, you know, because I'm a straight shooter. Algorand has to build a robust community. They had a great Decipher conference. Yeah. And they are incredible technology. I wrote a book about the technology, try to explain the comprehensive genius of that technology. Literally, the book is called The Genius of Algorand. Mm -hmm. But they got to build a community because, you know, you have a good restaurant in New York and you don't market yeah. the restaurant. No one's showing up. That's true. You could have really yeah. good food at the restaurant. But no one is showing up unless you go to the maitre d's, you go to the concierge desks at the different hotels, you mention it to the theater managers, you know, and you go to the corporations that do events and you push your restaurant. Yeah. Was, you know, because there's there's 100 restaurants, you know, and there's well, a lot of, of layer ones that have very good technology, you know. So we got to well, get Algorand a little bit more robust on the community development. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I know we have a short amount of time, but I do want to mention something that's happening in the Algorand community right now. Uh, some guys that have uh, Goose NFTs, um, Anthony, mm -hmm. have put an Ethereum um, face on a, a very popular Ethereum NFT project, and they're called Long Boys. They now okay. everybody's elongating their necks. Okay, and uh, <laughs> it's going viral on Twitter. Out the, I'm proud of those guys. You mentioned Kevin O'Leary, and something that I think a lot of people are noticing is that this, it seems like Sam is being kind of, and you're not part of this really. It, it, you seem to, you're criticizing a little more than I'm noticing, but it seems like maybe the media or people at least perceive it this way, that the media, people like Mr. Wonderful, Bill Ackman and, and guys like that um, are kind of playing softball on what, with what, you know, Sam has done. You Listen, know, what, you know Bill, Bill Ackman walked back those statements. I think mm -hmm. he probably jumped the gun on those. I think Kevin was pretty open today at the Bazinga conference. I joined him at the Bazinga conference and uh, make a long story short, uh, it became clear to me that uh, he doesn't want to say the word fraud because he doesn't know. And I think we have yeah. to give people the benefit of the doubt until the investigation happens. But I think he feels misled and I think he feels disabused and his money that he had on account at FTX has gone missing. And so he's vowed to figure out and find that money. Yeah. So, you know, listen, it sucks. You know, it sucks. But I mean, you know, look, I'm pretty upfront guy. I, what, 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 what Sam did was wrong. Yeah, it just was flat out wrong. We know right from wrong, and 
you know, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. When we talked, um, when we talked a few months ago, not a few months ago, it was probably what, six, seven, eight months ago. But uh, you, you know, we had talked about getting USDC on FTX. And that was obviously a big win for a few weeks. And now obviously that's not as great. You did have me, um, you said, have me back on and you can dunk on me um, about the grayscale ETF. I'm not going to dunk on you. I feel like you're probably getting dunked on enough. But um, so what do you what are you seeing with that grayscale ETF? I mean, they're just going through it right now. So it's not happening now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen now. You can dunk on me. You can throw me in the town square and you can dunk me. I really thought it was going to happen. But yeah. I don't see how they can do it now. No. Yeah. I mean, and also, just... what's going on there? Why is there a 50% discount now, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's something going on. I don't know. Man, I mean, I, there was a lot of, even after Terra Luna. Add that, I've... Coop, Coop, add that to the list of things I got wrong this year. Another thing I got wrong, yeah. Man, how does that? How is it going? I mean, I know you you kind of talk, but like it's got to be rough. You're fighting. You seem to always stay buoyant, stay clear. You. It seems like you're still like you got the same. I grew up in a blue collar family. Look, I'm indoors. You know what? <laughs> yeah, you know what my father said to me when I got my first job. My father said to me, "Hey, man, never complain about your job." Yeah. And I said, "Why is that, pops?" He said, "Well, you're indoors. You're out of direct sunlight, and there's no heavy lifting." Okay. And so I'm a blessed person for those reasons. And uh, I'm having a very difficult year, arguably one of the worst years of my investment career. Mm -hmm. But I do believe in market cyclicality. And I do believe in the macro factors that have affected the landscape for all of us. You know, I'm having a bad year. NASDAQ's down 30. Uh, market's getting rocked now here in the early part of December because I believe the recession is looming. Uh, the S and P's down fifteen to eighteen percent. Crypto's down sixty five. Yeah. Uh, there's been a wealth adjustment for many, many people. It's not just Skybridge. So, I I thought I was working with somebody who was the Mark Zuckerberg of crypto. Yeah. Now the question before all of us now is he the Bernie Madoff of crypto? Yeah. Okay, we know he's not the Mark Zuckerberg of crypto. So is he the Bernie Madoff of crypto? And I think time will tell whether or not he's the Bernie Madoff of crypto. Yeah. Um, but what he did was a disgrace and what he did hurt his family and hurt him reputationally forever. And, uh, you know, my message to Sam is a very clear message, not that he's listening to your podcast. Hopefully he is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've said this on Twitter spaces. I've said this on CNBC. I've said it on Bloomberg. Yeah. Uh, go to the authorities and tell them exactly what you did. Um, if you are the quote unquote effective altruist and all this stuff that you claimed, and if you, if you are not a malevolent person and you're a good person that made mistakes, perhaps crossed the line into criminality, go to the authorities and explain what you did so that they can prevent other people from being harmed by other perpetrators. And that's my message. It's very loud and clear. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. it it, he's he's trying to kind of make it sound like he 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 didn't know what was going on, and that seems to be a hard sell. I mean, somebody's at fault, and it seems like it's either yeah. Sam or his. You can't raise money at a thirty-two billion dollar valuation, yeah. and tell people that you're the wonder kind of crypto, and then a couple of weeks later say, "Well, I didn't know what was going on." You can't. No, no one's going to buy that, you know. No, and nobody should, frankly. Right? I mean. I mean, I, I don't, I don't see why anybody, but I, I, I don't know. I, I certainly don't know. You, you but, asked the question though, if you don't mind, I want to go back to, okay. Yeah. How do I stay buoyant? Cause this is yeah. very important for your young listeners. Yeah. There are only so much you can control in your life. I didn't choose my parents. I didn't choose the location of my birth. I didn't choose the body that the good Lord put me in or my brain chemistry. And so there's, only so much that you can control. If I was born 10 years earlier, my outcome of life would have been different than the outcome of life I'm, I'm with now. If I was born 10 years later, we don't know. There's circumstances in your life. There's luck in your life. Yes, you're making decisions and you could get these decisions right or you could get these decisions wrong or you could have timing issues. You know, we, you and I could be very right about Algorand. But yeah. it may take five years for us to be proven right. I don't know, Coop, you know. Yeah. But my message to your young people is it's the journey that's so exciting for me. It's yes. not necessarily the destination, okay? I, My family, growing up, we had one bathroom in our house. 
uh, there were five people. My dad worked his ass off as an hourly worker and we were, we had a good life. There was food in the house. Okay. So I'm not searching the rainbow to be the richest. I'm searching the rainbow to create a business that's exciting that helps my customers long-term. I'm not helping them this year. There's no question about that. Yeah. But if you look at market cycles, we will help them. You know, we had a great year last year. We were 700 over our index last year. Mm -hmm. We're having a shitty year this year. But if you look at, step back and look at an elongated cycle, I think people are going to be really rewarded by being with us. And, Absolutely. and you can't, you can't take this short term perspective with you and mark yourself to market minute to minute and be that person where, you know, you have a long term investment thesis until you have a short term loss. And you have a short term loss, you got to change your investment thesis. Yeah. I think it's very, very silly to do those things. So, so that's why I'm always so buoyant. And that's why I'm, I'm excited about where we are. If you like these prices in 2020, because that's exactly where Bitcoin is right now. Yeah. It's right where it was in 2020. So you have a, an opportunity to buy Bitcoin at the price it once was in, in 2020. Yeah. Now, what's your psychology like? What do you like fundamentally? And if you're somebody that believes in the story, you believe in a long-term thesis, this is a amazing opportunity. Yeah. If you don't believe in it, you know, then that's a whole different era. Yeah. When um, so, Sam so bought, me. yeah, that's great. And when Sam bought that 30% of, of the company, you yeah. also bought, well, I think $40 million worth of crypto, which the prices are about the same as when that happened. Yeah, I, no, I don't no. think it's similar. Everything's the same except for the FTT token. Oh, so you, you got stuck with some of that? Yeah, I lost $10 million on the FTT token. Yeah. And I, and I, and I, you know, we bought that in comity with him. He was my yeah. partner. Yeah. You know, somebody asked me on spaces, they said, Oh, you were trying to, he's trying to pump the FTT token by making you buy 10 million. I said, Okay, it was a $4 billion market cap. Okay. Yeah. I'm not pumping the FTT token with $10 million. $10 million. Yeah. 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 Not, okay. No. But, you no, know, I we made a mistake. We'll take that as a capital loss and we'll move on. Yeah, and we all now understand that Sam had a, a big interest in keeping the FTT token uh, bot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he, he needed that pretty badly. Um, let's, let, I know you have limited time, so let's uh, just kind of go back around to Algorand. Uh, do you still, yeah. I know last time we talked, you said you hadn't sold. You put 250. Sold. You haven't sold. Yeah, you, okay. I haven't sold. I still have all my Algorand. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to uh, stay in it. Okay. For as long of a period as, as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and let's see what happens. I'm a big believer in the long-term story of Algorand and Silvio. Mm -hmm. I like what Stacy's doing. I don't know what the situation is with Sean. Last time you and I spoke, you know, I'm recommending Sean to be the CEO, not the interim CEO. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's being permanentized or not. Yeah, I don't um, know either. It's not close so I'm just not close enough to it, but I hope it is. And if it isn't, um, I hope they make a decision on who they're going to bring to the table. You know what yeah, I mean? Well, well, I'll tell you what, I, I met Sean and what a cool, I mean, what a great, nice guy. He gave a speech like it just was good. It was the speech that we all yeah. needed. I felt like it really yeah, I saw, connected. I saw it. Yeah, oh, you saw it. Great. Yeah. He's a great message. I watched it online. You know, I had my had my shoulder operated on last week, right, right. before the, uh, the cipher. That's why I couldn't make it. What happened? What happened to your shoulder? You just kind of old age, yeah. old age, wear and tear on the shoulder, you know? Yeah. Go get speaking old, of, Cooper. <laughs> speaking of shoulders, by the way, uh, congrats on Verlander. That's kind of exciting, right? For, for your he's Mets. A, he's, a, he's a competitor, you know? Mm -hmm. You got Verlander and Scherzer. They're uh, old timers in the industry, but they're in great shape. And I think they'll be, I think they'll be, I think it'll be very valuable to the team. I'm a super yeah. excited about it. You're super excited about uh, uh, about that, right? Um, um, let me let me make sure that I because I know. Just want to make sure that I get. So I mean, a, a question I was going to ask you earlier, and I guess I'll ask it um, sort of again. Like it, even because of Terra Luna, there still seemed to be a lot of interest, but this FTX thing I think is rattled a lot of people. I think there was a lot of institutional people that were previously excited about um you know investing in the space and now they're pulling back is that what you're seeing i mean this has got to be what you're seeing right yeah no of course i'm seeing yeah. that i'm seeing that in my own i'm seeing that in my own firm yeah. i got people inside my own firm are questioning our decisions to go into crypto and they're they're upset about where we are as a firm i see yeah that. yeah, yeah. But, and then you're, 
It's a high vol uh, asset. It's an early adoption story. You can't juke yourself. If you're here, it may go down. But I do believe fundamentally it's going this way. Yeah. And so I've seen this movie before. I was alive during the NASDAQ market crisis and the 2000 debacle. If you ran from that, you missed out on a generational opportunity to own Google and Amazon and Facebook and all these different things. Now, someone will say to me, well, you know, Google didn't go public until 2004. True. But if you got blown out in 2000, you weren't participating in that public offering in 2004. No. Yeah, I know. Well, and it, it does seem like an odd, it would be an odd choice right now to jump ship when it's I mean, it, it can go down further and it, it very well might, like you said earlier. But I mean, zero is a lot. Clo- we're a lot closer to zero than we are to sixty nine thousand. That's so, for sure. so funny. You said that somebody said that to me. They're like, OK, well, we only have 17,000 more to go. I mean, so, you know, we I guess we could trade it to zero. You know, and there's people that wanted to go to zero. There's haters and things like oh, yeah. that. But you know, listen, I don't think that's happening. I think that the use cases are developing. You know, they just did this Bitcoin event in uh, Africa, right? It was like a Bitcoin conference in Africa. I don't know if you saw the thing, mm-hmm. but the world is underbanked. The world yeah. is underbanked. So we're going to need something, okay, to help the world. Yeah. Moreover, the dollarization is working in certain areas of the world, but it's not working in other areas of the world. So, you know, Bitcoin may end up as a potential alternative to that. Yeah, you know, should. don't go by me. You, you know, you, we were at the Draper Gorin conference, weren't we? Didn't we see yeah. each other there? Yeah. You know, Tim is talking about $250,000 next year. You know, no, I don't know. I, you know, it's probably an aggressive uh, thing. It probably won't happen. But I mean, it could be fifty to a hundred thousand. I mean, let me tell you something. Yeah. If Bitcoin was fifty to a hundred thousand dollars at the end of next year, would that surprise or shock you? You wouldn't be no. surprised by that. No, I'd be relieved. Right? I'd be relieved. I wouldn't be surprised, but I'd be relieved. Mm-hmm. Um, do you? You know, one thing that I was excited about, and the reason why I got into Al Grant in the first place, other than Silvio's vision, um, and this was, you know, almost two years ago, was what I thought it could do on an institutional level, a government level, mm-hmm. um, and a mass adoption level. And something that, you know, and now I'm in the space, the DeFi space is growing, the NFT space is growing, and I've got kind of wrapped up in that. So maybe I got disconnected from it. But what got me excited again at Decipher was things like the agro token where they're uh, tokenizing grain, the disaster relief that they're doing, what they're doing in Nigeria. I mean, it Algorand really is delivering on that kind of blockchain promise that was made a while ago. And I think that that, that fundamental stuff, Algorand feeling may be a little boring, except for these long boys I'm, um, I'm shilling you right now. But, uh, you know, it's I don't know. It, it seems to be growing and I'm I'm staying here and I'm going to continue to talk about it. And I'm glad that, you know, you sound like you're staying there, too. I did hear, though, by the way, sorry to cut you off. I heard you're writing a Solana book. Did I get this right? You know, you know, it's I see that on Twitter all over the place. What, okay. what I did say in a podcast is that I enjoy writing these books. I wrote a book on Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. I wrote a book on Algorand. I think the interviewer said, well, what's the next book? Is it on Solana? I said, I don't know. I have to do more research on Solana before I would make a decision to write a book on Solana. But I'm open to it. People think, well, that's see what I don't like about what's going on is people are in a zero sum thing in their brain. If you like Algorand, you have to hate Solana. It's like if you like the Mets, you have to hate the Yankees. That's not true. There's room for multiple layer ones. The marketplace is already telling you that because these Layer ones, you know, are trading from one to five billion dollars in market gap, some more, some less. But the point is there's multiple rooms. So I am intellectually curious about these blockchains and their use cases and their capabilities. So could I I am not writing a book about Solana. Could I end up writing a book about Solana? Yes, I could. But that doesn't mean that I'm not long Algorand and like Algorand, I have Solana, I own Algorand, I own Ethereum, I own Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. You know, if you guys, you know, you've got Bitcoin maximalists that hate me for owning these other tokens. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm a big believer in the space long term. And I do think that these smart contracts 
that are going to transit back and forth in these chains are going to be very valuable. So yeah. I'm sorry. Um, you know, you, and I'm just recommending to people don't box yourself in. You know, it's yeah. not a cult. It's an investment thesis that is a long term technology. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I, yeah, so I don't I don't know if I'm going to write one or not. Right. You know? Well, but I mean, we'll I mean, if I write book, one, hopefully you'll invite me on. You know, maybe I'll write hey, one. And you'll be we'll like, talk about right. it. You know, and maybe you'll own a little Solana alongside of me. I own Solana. Yeah, I'm not embarrassed to admit that. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, and also that uh, Solana book can take many different go in many different directions. It doesn't just what have happened? to be. <laughs> what happened with the FIFA situation? You know, I, I, I are they? Yeah, are they, what happened? Did anybody? I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not the authority on the FIFA situation, but I definitely have my finger on the pulse of the community. And there's a little bit like uh, that, that question, like, wait, what happened with this? Like, we were all excited. We saw Silvio shaking his hand in front of a soccer, holding soccer balls and stuff like that. Like, um, I think what ended up happening is, uh, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, is that they built the NFT marketplace uh, with FIFA. And it was a joint venture between the two. And there was also going to be a regional sponsorship that Al Grant entered into, the Al Grant Inc., not the foundation. And then I think with the way everything was going, I don't know the in, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I think Al Grant decided not to pursue the sponsorship. Oh, so okay. that so it never it never consummated. Well, the sponsorship never consummated, but the technical partnership, which um, Al Grant has made very clear was their priority, did is going forward. The okay. NFT marketplace is is built, and the idea, okay. as far as I can tell, is that the partnership is ongoing, and hopefully the partnership will extend to 2026 when the World Cup is over here. You know, so that's I got you. that's the idea. But Makes it definitely sense. did leave a bad taste in I think a lot of people's mouths. They you know they were excited, and there wasn't a whole lot of Algorand talk during this uh, World Cup. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, listen. I mean, look. You know, uh, they got to grow that community. Yeah. Uh, I believe in the technology. There's some very smart people working on Algorand, as was evidenced by Decipher. Yeah. Let's get this thing growing yeah. and let's see if we can make it happen. You know, that would yeah. be my thing. You know, what is your um, uh, before we go? I, I'm jumping all over the place a little bit here. Yeah. But, okay. you know, we talked about, you know, CZ kind of coming out and, um, you know, uh, people accuse him of causing a bank run. He's like, well, if a company can't withstand one tweet, then, you know, there's that argument. What What are your feelings about Binance and CZ and like, you know, I don't know, you know, what uh, what what he's done and his stature in the industry? I'm a CZ fan. There are people that don't like him, obviously, and they think he's got an opaque uh business and so on and so forth. I think the business is just growing. You know, the business is just new. Yeah. I don't think CZ thought Sam was in as precarious of a position as he ended up being. I think when CZ hit him on the 500 million tokens, he thought he was just going to wake him up a little bit and shock him. Yeah. I don't think he thought he was putting him out of business. Okay. Right. Which gives you a sense for things. Again, these are my opinions. Yeah, I think you're going to find that CZ is a very clever operator, and I think he's got a very strong balance sheet. That's my guess. Yeah. Now, yeah. again, I've been wrong about everything this year, Coop. So, you know, maybe you'll <laughs> might be back on. I'll get dunked for that. You know, but I won't say well, this: if CZ goes down, and God forbid, because I really don't want him to, and I like oof. him, and I want him to, I want him to flourish. Yeah. But if the biggest exchange goes down, or there's something nefarious there, I do think it sets back the entire industry. And, you know, we're talking about crypto winter going to crypto ice age. Oh, that man. could be like a meteor strike. You yeah. know, that could be crypto extinction, actually. So we have to be very careful and very hopeful that CZ is in a good position. And I'm, I'm, I'm wishing him well and I want him to do well. Yeah. I mean, he came out earlier uh, yesterday, I think it was, and he said something along the lines like, I want multiple exchanges, multiple wallets. Like, we, I, I want this to grow out. We're only 6%. You know, you know, he was he's like, this needs to be bigger. I don't want it to just be Binance. That's not my goal here. And, uh, you know, I, they've been under so much heat along with a tether that the hope is, is that even if there was some nefarious things going on or, you know, iffy things going on in the background, that they've had enough time to kind of fix it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but I, I believe, yeah. them. you know, Yeah, you do. Me too. Hey, thank, thank you, my brother. It's great to yeah. always be on with you, even though I'm in a uh, rough situation. I didn't want to miss out on saying hello and talking to you. Oh, I appreciate and it. Let's and stay in touch. All right. All right. And thank I hope, you. I hope you appreciate my 
honesty and my directness about everything. Of course I do. Of course I do. You're always so much fun to have on the show. You're always honest, direct. It's always great. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. All right. Be well, Coop. Merry All Christmas. Right, you too. All right. Yeah, you too. You too.